Yaya, the giant female panda, began its trip back to China on the 27th of April, 2023. From the Memphis Zoo, where it has spent the last 20 years as part of a loan agreement. In the cargo, there is also a dead body of the male panda, whose name is Lola. On February 2023, Lola unfortunately died, and pictures of the emaciated Yaya has also had strong impact on the Chinese public. After noticing the panda's poor health and abnormal behaviour, groups of people came together out of concern for Yaya and Lola's well-being. They started an online petition calling for the panda's return back to China and booked billboards in the New York Times Square to make their voices heard. In this documentary footage, we see that Yaya is in the cargo looking outside. She looks like she's thinking about her life in a new place, which she will be spending the next 20 years. The giant panda has lived in a dense bamboo forest in the misty rainy mountains of southwest China. It is a highly specialised animal, with unique adaptations. But the extinction was accelerated as humans began to build cities, farmlands and roads on a large scale. For the purpose of saving the species, people began to establish conservation and research centres, keeping the giant pandas captive. Now visitors can go to zoos to see these chunky black and white cute animals. Learning how to ethically engage with captive animals is important. Giant pandas like quiet environments due to their sensitive hearing. Giant pandas living in the mountains and forests can hear humans or car horns several kilometers away. They get very scared and run away quickly. Loud sounds and pressure will create a state of stress for the pandas. Severe cases can lead to bleeding, lesions and death. The shouts of tourists in the zoo will make giant pandas bear so much stress and fear. To protect their well-being, the zoo staff need to provide guidance by telling tourists to be quiet when they visit. While many tourists at the Memphis Zoo have enjoyed seeing the pandas for years, many have also voiced their concerns for the well-being of the pandas. For days and months on the live cam, we never see any bamboo roots or shoots. Giant pandas like eating arrow bamboo, black bamboo or water bamboo. They prefer fresh bamboo roots, leaves and especially shoots. Captive pandas need to eat a certain amount of fruits and high fibre cookies every day in order to get enough vitamins and amino acids. From the Memphis Zoo live cam, Yaya and Lola also shown much abnormal behaviour. Abnormal behaviour is common in captive animals. This can include stereotypic behaviour, highly repetitive, invariant and functionless behaviour, such as repetitive pacing, swaying, head bobbing and over-grooming, self-harm actions. For example, Lions and tigers will groom their fur repeatedly, only licking in one place. Elephants would walk around in place, shaking left and right as if they're doing a dance to the background music. However, the dance isn't because of pleasure, but to relieve bad mood and anxiety. It is not healthy just to please tourists' interests and to make people laugh. In addition to Yaya and Lola, the other animals at the Memphis Zoo, such as this polar bear, were also observed by tourists to be in poor conditions, with their fur sparse and matted. In nature, animals are active and do many things in order to obtain food and to survive. But in zoos, they are in small areas, waiting for the breeder to feed the same food at a regular interval. Stress from inadequate adaptation could lead to suppression of cognitive functioning and increased display of abnormal behaviours. Several studies have indicated that stereotypic prevalence decreased with increased enclosure size and enclosure enrichments like the presence of pools and stones. But Yaya only had one toy and a small swimming ring for more than 10 years. Over the years observing her daily life from the live cam, we did not see any keepers playing or interacting with her. 
Animals held in zoos, circuses, aquariums, laboratories, sanctuaries and other performing environments cannot be returned to the wild due to their dependence on human intervention. For example, animals in zoos are often sold to other zoos. Modern zoos and aquariums should take the vital societal responsibility to educate zoo visitors while treating the animals ethically. Involving more experts, such as veterinarians, reproductive physiologists and animal behaviourists, who can provide guidance for animal care and ethical practices in animal management. Zoo managers should focus more on improving animal care, including morally justifiable activity of enriching habitats and improving the health and the well-being of wildlife in their care. The increased keeping of captive wildlife in conservation research raises the concerns of animal welfare and animal rights. Most captures of wild animals is not ethical. There's a dialogue in the curve a documentary about the capture and slaughter of dolphins in Taiji, Japan. A dolphin smile is nature's greatest deception. It creates the illusion that they're always happy. Just because the mouths of dolphins and other whales have an upturned shape, people interpret them as smiling. Taiji is the largest supplier of dolphins in the world. Dolphins have a particularly good sense of hearing, and the fishermen in the Taiji area take advantage of this to catch them. Taiji fishermen on boats will wait until the dolphins come by their migratory routes. They create a wall of banging sounds underwater which frightens the dolphins. Several hundred dolphins then run for their lives and are driven to shore. The dolphins are sealed by nets and wait till the next morning, where all dolphin trainers would be gathered, selecting the ones that they want for their aquariums. They are then sold to different aquariums around the world. The dolphins that weren't selected are slaughtered and sold for their meat. They can get more than $150,000 for a live show dolphin. The profit is not only shared between the Taiji Well Museum and the local capturing fishermen, ironically they are also shared with the dolphin protection organisations. A lot of scientists get their money from research institutions, therefore they don't like to hear the message about captivity. Since different countries and regions have different protection laws for different animals, it is difficult to supervise. Balancing values and responsibilities in zoos and aquariums, as centres for animals research and conservation should be monitored more strictly. It also raises significant ethical concerns about human intervention in populations and ecosystems. Panda reproductive research programs, such as giant panda artificial insemination patents. During the procedure, the pandas are sedated and a fresh semen sample is obtained from the male. The semen is then inserted into the female. Many pandas are co-bred in captivity year after year. Giant panda cubs are born with congenital disabilities through artificial insemination and inbreeding in the panda base. For example, some panda cubs that have congenital spine problems cannot stand on their hind legs and suffer premature death. The breeding and the research activities of giant pandas evoke questions of animal welfare and conservation ethics. Professor Pan Wen Shi devoted his whole life to the study of wild animals. He once lived with a giant panda in the wilderness for 17 years. He is not in favour of capturing wild giant pandas for captivity. Human beings attribute to white giant pandas are not able to live by themselves. Most people have not experienced some of the difficulties in field research work. 
An example of this difficulty is that when the team led by Professor Pan Wenxi entered the Qingling Mountains on the 39th day, a graduate student died. Natural breeding of giant pandas is encouraged rather than artificial insemination. But some people believe that the pandas have no interest in mating, which is wrongly based. These misjudgments come from the reproductive rate of captive pandas in zoos. However, giant pandas in the wild are stronger. Female pandas usually have a fertility period of seven days. During this period, they practice multi-breeding with male pandas, and many male pandas compete for mating rights. Professor Pan's team found that the annual growth rate of wild panda mating in the wild is 4.1% annual change. At that time, the fastest-growing population in the world was Rwanda, with 3% annual change. Then why are giant pandas in the wild, which have higher rates than Rwanda, considered endangered by humans? Humans attribute to the low birth rate and the survival rate of pandas to the fact that the female pandas are not good at taking care of their cubs. However, Professor Pan Wenxi once shared a case. The first cub of a female panda died, which was actually related to the deforestation. At that time, less than 100 meters away from this panda cave, a team of workers was doing logging operations. Every day, you can hear the loud sounds of falling trees. Because of this, the mother had no experience in raising children in such a harsh environment. The first panda cub died. But pandas can learn because later in the same environment, when she had begun to get used to the noisy environment, the second baby panda born survived smoothly under her care. People should think about their responsibilities to captive animals and the conservation of species and habitats in the wild. Zoos and aquariums need to avoid becoming the final stop for species threatened in the wild. Instead, they should be true partners who can provide ethical animal management for the maintenance of wild populations across captive, wild and semi-wild contexts. China Showcase hope to share more information about animal and nature protection with you. By understanding how to ethically engage with captive animals, people can choose to consciously provide animals with a natural living environment and the ethics of wildlife research and management that is suitable for them. Thank <laughs> you.